Hi, so now if you know how to solder a basic connection, the second step will be to solder an LED. Now, here are the power supplies that I have in the classroom. These power supplies take AAA batteries, and you'll see that the AAAs don't really fit in there very well. A way to fix that would be to put a piece of paper in with it and tape it down. Now this will keep the batteries from falling out in case you drop it and keep it secure. This battery pack has two AAAs. This one has four. So this one will cost twice as much to buy batteries for. However, it will also have twice the voltage. So a normal battery like this, AAA, is 1.5 volts. And that's true for AA, that's true for C, D batteries. These are all 1.5 volts each. The larger batteries, like D, they just hold a lot more and they'll, they'll last a lot longer. But the voltage is the same. So, if I have one battery here that's 1.5 volts and I connect wires to it, then I've got 1.5 volts between the positive side here and the negative side. If I take two batteries and stick them together, then I have double that. So 1.5 plus 1.5, if I take a wire and put it here, I will have three volts between the negative and the positive ends. <clears throat> that is what this battery pack is doing. It has the wires connecting to this positive side, that's here, and the wi this black wire is connecting to the negative side, that's here, and right there, there's just a bar of metal right here that's connecting these two things. So that this point, these are touching each other by the metal that's touching here and here, and these two together are three volts. Here's a way to test it really quickly. A multimeter hooked up to this battery pack will show three volts. Now this other battery pack will show twice as many. This has got four batteries hooked up the same way. So now this battery pack should show six volts. So 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5. So the, the motors and the LEDs that we have, they will work on both three and six volts. Obviously they'll be brighter and this motor will run faster with the six volts. However, you'll be using twice as much uh, batteries, which will cost more in the end. So, <clears throat> If we are to solder an LED, the parts that you need are an LED, which is this tiny little thing. It's got a long wire and a short wire on the end, and a resistor. Now, I'll provide these for you, but you should know that not all resistors are the same. Okay? When we get deeper into it, you'll start to see that these bands mean different things and resistors can be very different in size. So we have to solder the connection to this LED first. Now, as we were talking about before in the first video, when you solder this stuff, you're not trying to just use the soldering iron to melt the solder. <clears throat> you're using the wire Excuse me, you're getting the wire so hot that it will melt the solder into it. So I just put a little bit of solder on the tip because that will help get the wires warm. And now I'm only touching the wires with solder. Now the wires are so hot that solder has flowed between the wires. And I'm stopping now that I know that there's solder in between these wires here. You can still see the wires. There's no big blob of solder anywhere. That's when you stop soldering this. 
So, an LED like this has a positive side and a negative side. And there are ways to, to tell based on the long and the short side, but what I often do is just test it out. Here it is lit. If I have it reversed, it will not light up. So I will take this and this and use the power source to light this LED up. Now, how do I shut it off if I solder these connections? The easiest way would be to put a switch inside of there. Here's a switch that you can turn on or off. So this switch will need to get in here as well. And the best way to, to tell this is to draw it. So our batteries are going to look like this in our drawing. Coming out. Here's the positive side on the drawing. Here's the negative side. Basically, it's this that we've already made. The wires are going to come down. And it's going to encounter a resistor, which is this drawing, and an LED, which, when drawn in a drawing like this, looks like an arrow with a bar and two little arrows coming off the top. Okay, so this is a resistor. Here's an LED. And there needs to be a switch in here. So a switch is a circle, another circle, that's open. So here's our switch. There shouldn't be a line there. Because this is an open switch, and when you touch that down, it's a, it's a closed switch. So, to make that connection, I've got some wires here. I'm going to solder on really quickly. To get this switch made. Now here I am soldering this first connection. I want you to notice how I'm not putting large globs of solder on anything anywhere. I'm simply melting a tiny bit of solder into the wires and once that is done I'm finished. Now I have my LED soldered with a, a wire attached to one side, the resistor, another wire. That matches our picture. LED, resistor, and then one wire is going off over here to the battery source, and the other wire is interrupted by the switch. The switch is only on one side of this circuit, because it only needs to be open in one place for it to shut off. The electricity is going to flow in this direction from the plus to the minus and this switch as soon as the switch is open then it's going to shut off and there is no way for the electricity to get through so this switch <coughs> there are other connectors we can use however the simplest way is to simply put the wire through the hole wrap it back on itself a little bit. In this case I'll twist it around and then use the, the hands to hold it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of solder where that wire is wrapped around that fin. So now this is much larger, so it's going to take a little bit longer to warm up. I'll put a little solder in there to help the heat transfer. But once it's hot enough, it doesn't take very much solder at all to get a good connection there. It's very neat, and there's no chance that the electricity can jump from there to there because I have any wires hanging out. If you have any wires hanging out, you're going to have to trim them off. In this case, I wrapped them up, and that's what I've soldered. 
So now I'm going to attach another wire on this side, and then we'll get the battery pack in there. Now I realize that the wire from the battery pack can go directly to the switch, and that's what I've soldered on here. The wire from the battery pack is hitting the one side of the switch. You can see there's no loose wires that can possibly short this out and, and bridge this dif difference. So when this, the switch will actually work, all I need to do is connect the other side of the LED to this wire I've added right here. And I'm going to neatly twist them together and trim them off before I solder anything because one was much longer than the other. So now these are twisted together. I'm going to trim because much of what these projects need to be effective and not short out all the time is very trim and very tight joints. So I'm going to get the wire hot and then let the solder flow between the wires. And that is the most basic thing to make, which is a battery pack. As in our drawing, a battery pack, a switch, a resistor, and an LED. When I flip the switch, the LED shuts off. Now, before you call this a, a completed project, there's one last thing is we need to cover all of these exposed joints. Okay? If this wire, which is coming out of the battery pack, touches this wire, which is coming out of the battery pack, that's called a short. And shorts are when there's nothing in the way of the electricity to flow directly from one side to the other. Here's a short. The electricity is going to go as fast as it can. Now, batteries are made that they're not going to blow up or anything when they short, but they will warm up and they will be dead before you know it. So if you have a short, what you'll end up with is a dead battery and a light that won't work. So to cover this stuff up, the simplest solution is electrical tape. So here's the electrical tape that I have. Take little sections of it, maybe use a scissors to cut it more neatly, but you are going to tightly wrap the exposed wires with this tape. Electrical tape does not let electricity flow through it, so metal can wrap around it, anything can happen to it, and it will not short out. So that's one joint covered. This long joint needs to be covered because a short is anything that touches from here to here. That's metal. So I'm going to tape this side of it first. Wrap it tightly, go around a few extra times. But you're going to want to keep it as tight as possible so it doesn't look sloppy. Then the other side needs to get taped as well. So I will, I will wrap tape here, all the way over the resistor, all the way to this point here. Finally, I'll put some electrical tape in this, I'll put some electrical tape in this joint right here. There it is taped up. Now I've wrapped this wire individually, this wire individually, then I put tape over the whole thing. It's important to do that because any piece of metal that would fall in there would be shorting out or turning it on. The very, very last step I would do is that this is kind of floppy. You could tape or you could somehow attach the switch to the side of this board and you could get the light in there as well somehow. And that's your project. 
Here it is, wrapped up, completed. I wrapped it in masking tape. On, off. Now this three volt system right here will last quite a while because of the resistor we put in there. And it would be possible to wire a switch battery pack to the motor setup that we have instead. Now if you get a motor that is missing these terminals, it's not a problem. We have everything we need still to, to fix this. You can still see that there are contact points right there and right there. And to get this working again, all we would need to do is a wire with a very short bit of exposed wiring on it. There's already solder on that point, and so I'm just taking my hot solder iron pushing down on that little wire, remelting the solder, and getting it to stick on that point. And there it is. I've reconnected that wire by remelting the solder on this point, and I'll do the same thing on this point. So I hope you enjoyed making this project. There will be LEDs and switches available and I should mention that the d wiring diagram to, to use a motor like this is very similar. It is battery pack motor switch and that's it so let me know how it goes good luck